something fabulous. Uh oh, who's recording? <laughs> Okay. Hi. Hi. How are you? Outstanding. Good Hi. evening. Hi. Hi. It's three Cynthia's up here. <laughs> I, know, I think I'm going to change my name. <laughs> okay, that's a beautiful name. It is. That's a, I mean, yeah, I feel left out. <laughs> okay, good evening, everybody. You got it, Michelle. We're ready to roll. Oh, great. Oh, okay. Let me share the presentation. Good evening, right. everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Can everyone see the presentation? <gasps> yes. All right. Wonderful. We want to welcome everyone. We'll be starting in just one minute. everyone and welcome 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 to we want to welcome everyone to dr white's video club late we're a little low shanties can you hear me at all i can hear you but you're a little low okay Can everyone hear me now? You're still low. Oh boy. Okay, let me see if I can do something about this right here. Can you hear me? Everyone hear me? We can. Try the volume on your computer. I just turned it up. Okay. Can everyone hear me or am I still low? You're better. Yeah, you're, you're not better. Low. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, great. I just want to welcome everybody to uh, Dr. C.V. White's, Dr. White's Video Club Lace, um, where she'll be sharing some powerful, powerful teachings on love. We just want to give you a, a little, um, a couple of uh, items, some housekeeping just really, really quick so we can jump right in to the teaching. Um, we want to ask everybody to please be mindful and keep um, yourself muted if you can, so that we can be sure that everybody is able to engage and enjoy and receive this information without interruption. And um, as far as asking questions, we're gonna ask that everyone will wait till the end of the teaching to ask your questions, which we definitely welcome. Um, the two ways you can ask your questions, you can even, um, the first option is to stick them in the chat, which actually, while the teaching is going on, if you have some questions, just so you don't forget them, go ahead and feel free to put them in the chat. We'll, we'll, look, we'll take a look at them. And the second option, once prompted, you can just simply mute yourselves at the end of the teaching 
and ask your questions. All right. I want to start off with just sharing a little bit about um, Dr. White and how she came about this awesome video club, LACE. Dr. White has a, a bachelor's of science degree in mathematics and education. And in May, 1999, she received a degree of master of arts in biblical studies of the Old Testament from Maple Springs ba um, Baptist Bible College and Seminary in Capitol Heights, Maryland. On May 2002, she received her doctorate of ministry from the same seminary. Now, currently Dr. White um, serves as an ordained elder of Heritage Church International, Waldorf, Maryland, under the leadership of Bitney, um, Bishop Rodney S. Walker uh, and Pastor Betty Walker. As a member and a leader, she serves as an associate pastor um, an overseer over the apostolic arm uh, and the secretary of the church as well. Many, many, many hats. And she served, serves as an officer manager. She also serves in the school of the prophets on the board of Presbyterians for Bishop Walker under Bishop Walker Ministries. But above all, um, though Dr. White is the owner and chief executive officer of C.V. White LLC, above all, Apostle White, that's her name under her vocation, is a child of the living God who has been gifted to teach the word of God with power and demonstration, to declare the will of God with clarity and precise articulation, and this is key right here, and to love as Christ loved us. Powerful. Why is it powerful? Because of the teachings that we're about to embark on tonight. So once again, we want to welcome everyone to LACE. If you can see on the screen, the video club is called LACE. Love Applied Can Endure. Love applied can endure. So on tonight, I, I, um, just to, to get things started, um, we're going to have uh, Dr. White come on. But first, I just want to share um, how I have been a witness to the love walk that Dr. White has um, embarked on in her journey, in her walk in the Lord, in her walk dealing with life, dealing with family, dealing with people that she's associated with, uh, friends, co-workers. She has definitely been in some intense training with the Lord on perfecting her love walk and demonstrating it as a witness before people. I'm one of them. So she can definitely teach on this thing called love. So if you think about love, let's just look here where I, I think it's an awesome acronym that the Lord has given her lace. Love, apply, can endure. Let's just look at the lace. The lace has a lot of different designs in it, different shapes and sizes, some big, some small, you know, um, and it's all intertwined. That's the thing. It's all connected. And um, when you think about how she got to the actual name lace is all connected. It's very beautiful, but very fine as well. But it also represents the connection um, that we have to someone or something. And also that connection because the material is so very delicate that it demonstrates that even though we're connected, we have to have the right life applications. We have to be able to apply the right application, life applications to people so that we do not like the lace can become, if you mishandle it, frayed and torn. And in, in that case, sometimes you can't even repair it, but we can have the, the, the right, we need to have the right life applications to people, which includes love, in order to keep those pieces intact, in order to keep people intact. So without further ado, I want to bring Dr. White on to talk about the second picture here, 
where we see this uh, beautiful but very unique looking plant. We want to introduce our, our presenter tonight, Dr. White. Hello, everyone. I know everyone and everyone knows me, so hi. <laughs> um, I want to talk about this before we get started. Um, this is an African violet. Many of you may recognize it as it is, but I've known this particular plant for at least eight or nine years. And the first few years, the owner of the plant, it, it would not bloom. Uh, the owner of the plant wouldn't give up on it. It's not my plant. I see it every time I go to the owner's house. Uh, but that's why I took a picture of it when it started to bloom because I was so amazed at her uh, being able to do that. Um, she repotted it, she fertilized it, you know, and she took care of it for years before it would bloom. And finally, it came to life and started blooming and now it blooms regularly all the time. So what if she had given up on it? What if she had thrown it in the trash? What if she had said, okay, you know, enough is enough. I've replanted you, I've replanted you a couple of times. Uh, I've changed your soil, I've given you um, fertilizer and I've done all these things. But this is a difficult plant to grow, but people who grow it, they, they know what it takes. It takes a certain thing uh, that to happen to it for it to grow. And she did what she needed to do to make that happen. So now we're talking about doing what we need to do to make things happen for us and to make things happen for other people. So we're gonna jump into lace right now. Lace, love applied can endure. It can endure. So let's move on. Let's move on to uh, the next uh, slide here. Fourteen habits. This, this is fourteen habits. I'm sorry, you want to do that, Doctor Doctor White? I was uh, um, I needed to unmute. <laughs> um, I just want to just quickly mention in the video club that this is um, this is a series, and in the series are fourteen life habits um, that you say that say I love you. So um, what I didn't get to mention is that. Dr. White will be providing these teachings every Monday at 7.30 p.m. So we invite you to come back and um, walk with us through the 14 habits. Um, tonight, we will be doing habit 12. We'll start with habit 12. Dr. White is going to share with you why that is. All 14 habits are very important, but we're starting with habit 12. But we wanna provide with you her information um, just in case you have uh, questions, comments, concerns, um, these are the various uh, options where she can be reached. Um, you can uh, feel free to write at 150 Post Office Road, Suite 1027 in Waldorf, Maryland, 20604. Um, you can um, send her information via email at drcbwhite at gmail.com. And of course, what I definitely don't want to fail to mention, um, her website, cbwhite.com, where um, Dr. White, who is a renowned writer, she has written over 20 books. And the one that sticks with me, the one that I absolutely remember is Winning Battles with What? Love. Powerful book, powerful book. You can obtain any of, the, any of her books. All of them are awesome. Even on cbwhite.com, or they are also available on Amazon. So this is where we're gonna to start tonight, the 14 life habits that say, I love you, one part of the series. Um, in this part, we are dealing with love. Okay, well, let me say up front, this is my first Zoom. So I call myself setting it up so that it will go an hour. I don't know what's going to happen. So if we get, if we, if we get cut short a few minutes, I may have to send you another link, but we're gonna to try to get through it um, without it kicking us off. Um, so let's start here with people love to be loved. There's something in every person that loves to be loved, no matter what their personality is. You know, sometimes we think people are mean or they're angry or they just don't like people or whatever it is. But God has put something in all of us that needs love and that wants to be loved. Then those people that act uh, unlovable really do want love, but they will never ask for it. So no matter what nationality you are, 
you know, where you are on the planet, everybody needs love. And most of the time, you know, when we are hungry for love, just really hungry for it because we're not receiving it, we look for it in the wrong places. You know, we look for it in other, doing other things like food or whatever it is that we want to do or trying to satisfy that in some way, not even understanding what it is that we need in some external way. So no matter what culture you're in, you know, um, they have a way to present love for each other. And whatever these habits are, they truly uh, give and receive love. So it's easy to say that I love you to someone that loves you, but for people who need it the most, that's a more difficult thing to do. So you can get a, you can get an I love you from people, but you have to love them first. So no matter what nation you're from, no matter how rich or poor, no matter how young or old, um, everybody needs love. And so we're going to talk about that in a minute. What is love anyway? You know, what is it? it it's, it's not what we think it is. And no matter what age we are, no matter what we are, uh, it's not what we think it is. But it is uh, treating people with the value and respect without conditions. Um, so let's move on to the next one that talks about, um, let's move on to the next one, Michelle. That okay. Are you there? Love is an action. Yeah, love is an action. Love is a choice. And um, I put these slides here so that, you know, if you want to take notes and uh, you can take some notes and um, you can have to, that to keep with you. It's a choice, not an action. Uh, I mean, it's an action, not a choice. So, uh, and you can commission it to work for you by forming these habits. And you must do these in order, you know, to become a habit, you must do them. So if you choose not to love, then you choose to work for yourself. And that, that by that, I mean, many people who won't follow these 14 habits, they work for love. Uh, they are trying to get love by working for it. You can't get it that way. You know, you cannot get it that way. Um, it has to be given. It's a choice that people have to make. And it's a choice that you and I have to make. Uh, I've been dealing with this all since I first decided that I looked in the Bible when I came back to Christ and I decided I was going to love people. Uh, I think I've been doing this over 20 years, just loving people and going through the process. There's different levels of it. There's different processes of it. And you just don't do it because it's a good idea. You don't even do it because God said you have to go through the process and Holy Spirit has to help you. So it's not unique to people. You know, uh, when you pick up trash off the ground, you, you love the grass, you love the earth, you love the insects, you know, and that is a way to say that I love you. Um, when you honor your lunchtime by not abusing it, you say I love you to the company. Or you can say, I love you to anything that you appreciate and honor. You can say, I love you to that. But the one thing I wanted to say about my uh, people, when I, was, when I was working, I do not have a green thumb to raise plants like some people do. I, I, I think um, Cynthia does that very well. So I just listen to her stories about it. But I don't even try to do it, you know, because she's always out in her yard planting flowers and I'm just thinking about, wow, that must be a beautiful yard that she has there. Um, but what I did when I was working years and years ago, I had plants, I had plants in the office and I would talk to them and I would talk to them and everybody else's plants would die and mine wouldn't. All I did was water them. I didn't repot them. I didn't do anything to them. I would just talk to them. And I wasn't talking up close. I, I'd speak to them when I came into the room. You know, and, and they would always look beautiful. Um, and I was really good about watering them on time, but the other people were doing it too, and theirs were dying. So they would want to know what I knew. They thought I had a green thumb. I didn't. I just talked to the plants. Now you say, when you talk to plants, when I tell people that, one of the things that they would tell me, what well, it was your carbon dioxide that causes them to grow. No, I wasn't even close to them. You know, when I first came to this area, I had a fish tank. And every time I got home from work, I would say, hi, guys, I'm home. And I went about my business. I do that when I walk in the door. And, you know, I would feed them in the morning before I left for, for work. So it wasn't that they were getting food. But after a while, 
when they heard the door latch open, they all came to the front of the tank. They all came to the front of the tank and I would speak to them. And furthermore, um, I'm, just, I'm just sharing with you how powerful love is. You know, I had, uh, one time I had some wasps in my, um, in my power box out by the air conditioner and the air conditioner repair man came and said, I can't fix it because you got this huge wasp nest in there. You're gonna have to get some spray and get rid of them so I can do that. And uh, so I went out and I talked to them. I said, you guys gotta move. This, this, this thing needs to be fixed. You're gonna have to move. And I went on back in the house. So the next day he came and they were gone. Uh, and he just knocked down and as he said, what you spray them with? I said, I didn't spray, I told him to go and they left. And he did not believe me. He don't believe me to this day. But my family got a whip of it one time. They tried to build another group, tried another year, tried to build a nest on a carpool. I went out there and I talked to him. I said, look, I'm going to be nice to you guys. I'm going to give you a chance to go out there in one of those trees in the backyard and build your nest. But you can't build it here because I have to come out here every day. And I'm, you know, I'm going to disturb you and you're going to disturb me. You need to go put your nest in a tree and out of this, off of this carpool. And they left. Well, I got a lot of trees in the backyard. I didn't know which one they went to, but I was thinking about it. And they left, but guess where they went? They went to the tree over the mailbox. So now I got to deal with them over the mailbox. Well, because I told them to go to the tree and didn't tell them which one, I didn't bother them when they were over the mailbox. They just let them stay there. So I want to just let you know, you know, that it's very important. And when you go to, there is no way to love people Accept these 14 habits that we need to do to learn. So we can we can do that and then we can learn how to do it by just paying attention to what I'm going to share with you now. You know, so you can look at these and you can check your lifestyle. Some of them you may be already doing, some of them you may be doing well, some of them you may not have heard of, but this one that we're starting right now is with number 12. So um we're going to number 12. And the reason we're going to number 12 is because of the season we're in. There's so many people that are going through so many things until it's really not possible to um, minister to them about this uh, without them hearing it in a way that they can handle it. So we're starting with 12. There's 14 of them. And next week, we'll go back to number one and we'll cover 12 again because I, I, I'm not gonna be able to do it justice this time. I could talk on this subject right here for six or seven hours. But let's talk about what are all things? Bears all things, it's habit number 12. So what are all things? All things are everything. Uh, the good things, the lovely things, the kind things, the smile things, the joyful things. We all know that we can love people when they do that. But these other things on this list, all of which I have experienced, and I'm sure you have experienced more than I have, um, or something else again to love. Now, when I say they're all things, I'm talking about the attitude and the behavior that you have when you come into someone who used their will against you. If you're in a, an abusive situation and somebody is really harming you physically or any other kind of way, that's not bad. You're not supposed to stand there and take that, but your attitude about that person should be different. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. You're not supposed to. Uh, enable people because see love is not just being kind to people uh kindness is not enabling people and kindness is not giving people an excuse not to do what they are sometimes you have to have some tough love with people and when you don't let people know what they're doing to hurt themselves or hurt other people and you're in a position to do so then you're not loving them either so it's not uh it's not uh a sacrifice that you have to just be kind to everybody in every situation. Um, in some situations, you're going to have to be stern, but your attitude and behavior uh, for that person should be different. Okay, so let's uh, let's go on to uh, look at how we do that. Okay, it bears all things. We just talked about that. It doesn't matter uh, what it is. You can't blame other people for what happened to you. You shouldn't do that. You know, when we make a habit of bearing all things and nothing can stop us from doing anything we need to do. Nothing can stop us. And when it becomes a habit, we can say to people, I love you. And they know that you are genuine. They know that you will stay by them. They know that no matter what happens, uh, they can count on you. Okay, so now how do you bear all things? One of the things I do in my teaching is teach people 
practical ways to do things because it's one thing to hear the word of God, but it's another thing to know how to do it. So let's move on to how do you get it done? How do you get that done? You get it done with the help of the Holy Spirit. You can't do it on your own. If you could, you would, you know, you can't do it on your own. So the scripture that helps us with this is Romans 8, 28 and 31 through 32. And we know all things work for good for those that love the Lord. And I think everybody on here has heard that and they know that, but why does it work for good? I mean, what, why is God doing that? Why is he allowing things to happen? You hear people say, I'll say, why did God allow this to happen? And since he's a God of love, he allowed it to happen because it's going to bring a change in you. It's going to help you grow up. Uh, it's going to make you an adult son or daughter of his. And so that you can do what Jesus did. But the part that we don't pay attention to usually is verse 31 and 32. Uh, what then shall we say to all these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, he who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? So he's not going to let people abuse and mute, uh, abuse and misuse us either, but he wants us to be wise. We can't jump in and pay people back for what they're doing for us and not ex and expect God to get involved in it because he can, because that's the devil's territory. He can. So we do James 1 and 2 as well. Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, when you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance leading to a spiritual maturity and an inner uh, an inner place inner peace and let <clears throat> endurance have its perfect results and do all through thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith lacking in nothing so let's go on now to let's see how we how we make this happen how can we make this happen? So we got some questions here. Um, so um, Shanti, do you wanna share these questions with us? Sure, yes, ma'am. So on this um, life application 12, bear all things. Let's talk about how do we bear all things? I am eager to get some answers to these questions. Question number one, what are some of the things that you do and I to let people know you love them? Okay, if anyone wants to just share, um, um, so I'm just letting you know that I'm going to um, post this on Facebook so that we can have other people uh, share it. So I'll give you that heads up, but if anyone wanna share what you do to let people know that you love them, um, um anyone want to share well i call people to see how they're doing uh, try to keep in touch and also i listen when people want to talk or you know they they want to share okay anybody else sometimes um Especially if a um, you know if some someone is homebound, um, I will um, you know call and you know ask if I can come over and just spend some time with them. Okay, okay, those are good answers, and people do feel loved when you do those things. When you do kind things for them, they really do feel loved. Uh, but all the time, people don't do kind things. Um, I remember, uh, this is this is Jackie Broadnax from Atlanta. Hi, Jackie. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hello. Um, I remember trying to take care of, of, of senior citizens sometimes, and um, sometimes they were really mean. <laughs> Are you trying to take him? You, you ever experienced that, Jackie? You ever experienced trying to talk to people that are really, you know, uh, terse and short? Yes. Um, <laughs> sometimes they are. And so you still have to love them. You still have to do that. And most of the time, though, when people, um, when people uh, say that they uh, love people, <clears throat> they have different answers. They have different answers. 
And um, one, one, you know, just the dynamics of this, doing, uh, love is an action. Um, I was watching one of those Black Lives Matter uh, um, uh, protests and, and, and a white guy, a white group, they were out there protesting, you know, because they were, they were with, the, with the, uh, the group that was saying, you know, you people just need to go home. So one of the black guys walked up to this white guy and says, why, why do you hate me? And he could not answer because he didn't know him personally, but he repeated the rhetoric that they normally say why they don't like black and brown people. And he told the guy, he says, well, you know what? I realize you don't like me. I realize you probably hate me or whatever he said to him, but he said, I love you and I'm going to love you and, and I will always love you. So the guy started crying. He just broke down and cried in front of the guy's face and he didn't help him. So he really needed love. He didn't even know how to ask for it, but because he responded correctly, he bore that. That was bearing all things, you know? So, you know, not everybody will love you, um, but you, bearing all things, you know, like I said before, it, it's, it's how you handle people and how you handle and respond to your situation. You know, I remember reading in the word where several times they tried to kill Jesus before time, but Jesus never said a bad word about those that were trying to kill him and he knew that they were. He knew that he was going to die for he, because he chose to do it, but he wasn't going to let them do it, but he never said a bad word about it. The same thing with Paul when they were trying to kill him. He never said a bad word about those people that were trying to kill him. He was still trying to get them converted and get them to come to Christ. So we have to understand that sometimes the things that people do and say, I love you, are not because they don't know what love is. Habit number 12 is bearing all things. You know, I've talked to people and they had the same misunderstanding I did. When I grew up, I thought that people love people uh, when they bought things for them. I had to learn that the hard way. So I said, when I get children, I'm going to buy them everything I can, and I'm going to buy them everything they want. And you know, I'm not going to spoil them, but I'm going to I'm going to spend money on them because I thought that meant love, but it didn't. So other people have the same misunderstanding. Some people think if you're obedient, you love them. Some people think, you know, if you if you uh, keep the house clean, you love them. Some people think, you know, if you cook me a good meal every day, you certainly do love me because I like that. Well, that's not love. You know, that is a kindness that you do to people and it's an action that you show them that you care about them. But these 14 things that we're gonna be talking about are the things that cause people to really know that they are loved. They call people and they cause change to happen. But most of the love that we give out to people, we are the greatest benefactor of it all. When we love people correctly, when we develop these habits and we do people this way and handle them this way and respond correctly, we are the greatest benefactors of that. Uh, so what's the next question, Shanti? This is a really good one. Have you known people who treat non-family members better than they do family? And anybody, if so, why? Anybody know anybody like that? I see Cynthia saying yes. Yes. I see. I see Cynthia. Cynthia saying yes. Um, okay. So why? So let's talk about why they do that. The reason they do that is because they know you love them, and they can be themselves. They can be just who they are. They know you love them. You know. If, if they've got some nasty habits, they'll let you see them because they know that you're still gonna love them when it's over. And But for other people, they're trying to win their love. They're trying to work for it. Remember I said, you can't work for love. You have to love people and then let that work for you. You can't work mm -hmm. for love. So then by them putting on a face at church, putting on a face on their job, putting on a face in the grocery store and clubs or wherever they are, community centers and wherever they are and treating them people nice because they don't want those people to think badly about them. They don't want those people not to love them. They don't want those people to use their negative habits against 
them in any kind of way. So they work for it and they put on a face and, and, and they put on a facade that's not really them. So at home, when they come home and they act the way they do and treat you badly in that particular habit or in that particular behavior, for whatever the reason is, it is because they know that if they do that in front of you, you're still going to love them after they do it. And that's the reason. Okay. Next wow. question. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Next question. Next question. What are the things people do that let you know that they love you? Anybody? <laughs> well, one of the things that um, I notice is that is it pretty much gets down to what you were saying about those who treat others better than family members. They just they just accept who you are, um, and they love you where you are, but they also love you enough to not let you stay where you are. Um, that's my, that's my experience. Um, and I can hear from someone when they correct me or bring my attention, bring something to my attention. And I think back and I'm like, gosh, but they still love me, you know, in spite of that flaw, in spite of that growth moment that I needed. Um, and that, really lets me know that someone loves me uh, when they put up with the craziness. <laughs> Amen. That is Cynthia Anglin from Chicago. Hi, Cynthia. That's, that's the third Cynthia on here. <laughs> okay, so that's absolutely true. When people can love you and, and they see your faults and they can still love you and help you and if they can help you, at least tolerate you, uh, it is something that lets you know that they love you. That is bearing all things. That's what we're talking about, bearing all things. Because when we have been hurt, when we have been abused, when we have been misused, when we have been taught improperly or not correctly, uh, we use our will uh, against or for people. And every time we use our will for people, it may not be all that great. And some of the things that people have taught uh, people that was love, it wasn't love at all. You know, I, I, I shared this story with, uh, with uh, um, Shantis and Michelle about uh, my son, Lance, the one that just went on home to the Lord when he was a little boy, he came home and he was crying. And he said, you, mom, you and dad don't love me. And I said, why, what, why you think that? And um, he said, because <clears throat> you all, don't do, uh, you all don't do what, what Jonathan's parents do. And, and, and they beat him. And when they beat him, they tell him, we're doing this because we love you. And I said, well, we're not going to beat you just, you know, just because. I mean, you might get a spanking for doing something wrong, but we're not just going to beat you to tell you that we love you. But Jonathan thought that. And so my son came home and told me that. And so people just really don't really know what love is. And I didn't know this when I was talking to him, but I knew that I wasn't going to beat him as, a, as a, uh, an indication that we loved him. So bearing all things, when you run into people like that and that are hurt like that um, from different things like that, uh, they may use their will against you. And when they do, they become an enemy. And when they become an enemy, what you're supposed to do is to love them, forgive them, bear that situation, and do something good for them. That's hard for people. It's really hard for people when they have to really understand that that's how, it, that's how it's done. That's how God gets involved with it. That's how he put hot coals on people's head when they do things. And the only way you can get him involved, get God involved, is for you to follow this direction. This particular habit, number 12, is a very important one. And it's a key one, it's way down the list, but it's a key one because it causes us to understand that we have to be selfless. We cannot be selfish. We have to be a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, and then depend on God to take care of the places where we feel that we have been 
hurt. I know I used to think, God, why do you want me? Why do you want me to do this? Why do I always have to make the sacrifice? They don't ever get back what they did, you know. So you want to get them back. You want to get them. You want to make them suffer like you did. God, why don't you say something to them? You know, you're telling me to do this. I'm just, I, you know, I felt like, I felt like God was using me because. He wasn't doing anything to them. He was telling me to love them. I was learning the different levels of love. And I'm telling you, and when you start learning them and you start going through them, you will find sometimes that you, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why I have to go through this and, and, and they just keep doing this and I just have to keep forgiving them. 70 times, 70 times, seven a day, forgive them. When are they going to stop doing it? You know? What's, what? And so the, the, the reason is God rewards us by the obedience of this habit. We are the ones that is the greatest benefactor of this habit, not the person that we're loving. They get a benefit, but we get the greatest one. We get the greatest one because we get peace. When you love people properly and you bear all things, you go to bed, you don't worry about uh, what, what they did, why they did it. Why won't they stop? What can you do to stop them? What do you need to do? You don't need to do anything but love them and go to bed and go to sleep. And you will have perfect peace and then God will deal with them. Sometimes you have to tell people, uh, you're apologize to people that you know they did wrong. You know they were wrong. And you have to apologize and you apologize just like that man did, those two men did at, at, the, at that um, Black Lives Matter thing. Um, the other guy was wrong. But when he apologized, sometimes you, you won't see those people come back to you and, 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 uh, and weep and, and say that they're wrong and they were sorry, but they will. Sometimes what they'll say to you as soon as you apologize, you should have done that because you know you were wrong. you know, And it'll push it right back in your face. But you have to let that go. You have to really let that go because that is the way you bear all things. Okay, John, what's the next question? Oh, that was so good. That was so good, Dr. White. And that really um, um, leads us to the next question. Can you let people be who they are? <laughs> wow, this is a hard one for everybody. <laughs> let people be who they are. You have to let people be who they are. You have to let people be who they are. You say, well, how do you know who they are? Just watch them, pay attention, you know? Watch people, pay attention, and see their habits. Once you see their habits, if it's something that's hurting you or hurting somebody else or even hurting themselves, you know that that's who they are. No matter what they say, pay attention to what people do because that's what's in their heart and that's who they are. So an example of that, if you know a person is late all the time, why do you keep hammering them about being on time? What you have to do is pray and turn that over to God. You don't have to get mad and say, they made me late. They made me late. That's the fifth time you made me late. No, they didn't make you late. You made you late. You could have left them, but you didn't. And so you blame them for it. If you know they're late, find a creative way to keep them from making you late. Or you may have to just leave them sometime so that they won't continue to cause you a problem that's going to cause you a problem on your job and your business and anything else. If the person is, is habitually late, you can't change them. They have to change themselves. You cannot change people. God doesn't change people. He doesn't override their will. If they will to be late, they can be late, but you have to be wise about how you handle people. And this is how you know how to keep people in your life and how to let them go. You don't have to keep a person in your life that's causing all kinds of drama and trauma, but you still have to love them. So how do you do that? You let them out of your life, but you still have the right attitude about them. You still pray for them. You still fight the devil on their behalf. You still do that. You don't have to say things like, you know what? I'm done with you. If I never see you again, it'll be too soon. You know? That is not bearing all things. That's just not it. You can't do it that way. 
And, 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 you know, we don't want to just, if people, if people are causing all kinds of problems, whether it's in your, your family life, your marriage life, your business life, your church life, you just step back. You just step back. You can't keep everybody in your intimate space. You can only keep those in your intimate space that have a like spirit. If they have a different spirit, it's okay, but you have to really know how to handle that. And you have to make a wise decision about how to handle you, but you still have to love them. So you have to let people be who they are. Who you are is who you are. You know, if you like to, to uh, eat your dessert first, every time we go out to eat, what? what? You can. <laughs> you can, and it's okay. Let's just let people be who they are and it not be a problem because we can't fix people. The only person we can ever change is ourselves. And since we can, we will. Okay, Cynthia, you got a question? Well, yeah, I just wanted to make a quick comment about what you're talking about. And it has to do with my garden. Um, and I do love gardening. And when I moved where I, I live now, there are two, two different neighbors Court, tried to create problems for me with, you know, gardening. One lady was, she doesn't live here anymore, but she was a master gardener. And she actually frightened me because she came behind me in my backyard and I didn't hear her come. She said, I just had to see where she do kind. And I just ignored her. You know, I mean, it, I didn't, it, I didn't get offended by it. I just wondered why she did what she did. But Cynthia, um, you were helpful in my having that kind of attitude because you had talked to me about loving people. So I didn't, I didn't respond in kind. And when she got ready to move, she said to me, I know you're a Christian. And she gave me some items, one of which was a shovel that she said is a really good shovel. And it is, and I've used it a lot. I'm glad I got it and some other things you know, that were helpful. Another neighbor, because I have a tree, I had a tree in my yard, it died. I've got to put another one there, the HOA requires it. And she saw me talking to someone and, and who had you know, stopped her car, gotten out her car to talk to me. And she had, this particular neighbor had had knee surgery. So she hobbled really quickly over to where I was and said, yeah, what about that tree? She's from the AOA, I was in trouble, you know, with the tree. So um, I didn't say anything to her. I just said to the lady, no, I don't know where that street is that you're asking me about. So then the lady, my neighbor looked at me and she hobbled back, you know, across the street where she lives. But I was never unkind to her because of it. And, you know, I won't be, you know, and she, she makes it her business to, when she sees me, she stops and she speaks. You know, I'm usually outside in the yard or whatever, and I speak back. But I wanted to just point out that what you said about the Holy Spirit working through us, people see that we're loving. They see that when we, we aren't trying to create a problem for them, even when they try to create problems for us. Even when, and, and, and connected with the second lady is a, are some people who recently moved and they tried to do some things. And I didn't even know that until after they moved because of some things that were said. And one of the things that the husband said to me, he says, you know, we had a really hard time selling our house. And I don't know if it was something that we said or something we did. I had no idea what he was talking about, but later I knew that, the, that his wife was probably behind that lady trying to find out if I got tr in trouble over not having a tree. And I am planting a tree in the fall, by the way. But it's just that if we are, if we have the right attitude, if we have the right heart, if we treat people respectably and lovingly, we're the ones who come out ahead each and every time. I, and that's what you're saying about us being the ones who benefit most. Yes, yes. And that is Cynthia from Williamsburg, Virginia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Shanti, the next question. Shanties, can you hear me? For sharing. Yeah, yes. look, looks like, can you hear me Shanties? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. What's the next question? 
Yes, the next question is, does the opinion of others of you hurt or offend you? Does the opinion of others of you hurt or offend you? Okay, I, uh, that question is, is, is very critical because um, we have to let people be who they are, but their opinion belongs to them too. It doesn't belong to you. Anything that comes out of a person's mouth is in their heart and it belongs to them. You cannot take another person's heart as yours. As God has said, we are wonderfully and beautifully made. And a lot of times we try to live according to the opinion of other people who did not create us. You know, it's not like we're a cake that they made and it didn't turn out right. And they have an opinion about how to turn, make it over again. So we cannot let other people's opinion hurt or offend us. And a lot of times that is the reason that we're not able to bear all things because we let that happen. A person's opinion is not going to put any money in your bank, is not going to do anything to heal your body. It is not going to keep your family together. It is not going to get anybody anything, but something that they want to do. And usually when a person is giving their opinion about what you should do or you should not do, that doesn't line up with what you agree to and already know about yourself, they just want you to allow them to have authority over you. In other words, they want you to let them be your God so that you can do what they say do. So you don't do it. You don't let other people's opinion offend or hurt you because they have no heaven or hell to put you in and because it's not who you are. You have to know who you are. You know, the people uh, uh, walk up to somebody and say, well, you're just a rude person. Well, no, you're not a rude person. You're just a person that maybe have just experienced death in your family. Maybe you just lost your job. Maybe you just, you know, your car broke down. It's just a bad situation. It doesn't mean that you're a rude person. You know, so we have to be careful. Even when people speak over our lives, information that's not true. We can't let people do that. What we do is we get mad at people who start saying things about us that's not true. It is especially a problem with married couples because if the spouse starts spouting out of their mouth something about the other one that is not true, then they get into a big argument and a big uh, strife situation. And I'm not talking about physically fighting because we don't know anybody that does that. But, but why? Why should that happen? It happens because the person that heard it believed it. Because if they didn't believe it, it would not have made them angry. No, no, I'm not that. That's not me. You don't know what you're talking about. And you walk away. You don't accept that. But if you get mad and you start defending yourself, what are you defending yourself against? What are you defending yourself? It doesn't have to be a marriage. I mentioned that because that's what I hear most, you know, but that's what I hear most, but I hear from other people too, you know, someone so and so said this about me and it wasn't true. And they keep saying, so what? It's not, just tell them, that's not me. Is it you? It came out of your mouth. It came out of your heart. Is it you? If it is, that's fine. But just forgive them and keep going and bear that because that's not you. You don't have to accept that. And it does keep you from forgiving them. It does keep you from uh, uh, not taking that against it. And if you, if you do keep taking it uh, as harmful to you, then you'll become bitter. Now you've got a real serious problem because God has got to deal with you about the bitterness. So it's really important for us not to allow other people's opinion to hurt and offend us that it will keep us from bearing all things. And what I'm doing is I'm talking to you about practical ways to make this a lifestyle, practical ways to look at this and be able to handle it and practical ways to help other people who you see that need to understand why they should do this and how it benefits them. Okay, what's the next question, Shanti? Do you find that people love you the way you have already loved them? 
Okay. Did anybody got a witness of that? If you have a witness of that, raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Well, most of the time that's not true. You don't find that you don't find that people uh, respond to your love and like kind. Most of the time it's not true. <laughs> because that person may not be the person that's going to give you the benefit of what you did. Because you planted a seed of love, you are going to get love. It may not be back from that person, but you will get it back. You will get it back because seed time and harvest is real and it's true and you will get it back. So if that person uh, didn't love you the way that you love them, that's fine. You know, but that is a problem for people because, you know, I hear it all the time. I don't know what's wrong with them. I, they never call me. I'm, all, I'm the one that always have to call them. And, and especially if you are a, uh, if you are a firstborn child, you get a lot of responsibilities that the other children born after you don't get. And so what happens is, if, and also if you're the one that, that is selected to help the family, there's one person in every family that's selected to help the family. And that person gets a lot of flack from the family members that they have to help. Well, God wants to use the family member to help them. He doesn't want to necessarily use a stranger, so he'll give you more. He'll give you more. If you're willing to help your family, you're willing to help other people as well. You don't just help your family. Anybody ask for anything that they really need, you might be willing to do that. So you may not find that the people that you have shown love to will love you back that way. And especially in the situations where you're not going to um, um, get uh, the, the, the opportunity to be in their presence 24 seven. Some people have come back to me uh, and said to me, uh, after I've apologized for things I did not do, after I uh, loved them and did something good for them and, and you know, they have accused me of doing things like that. But somebody, uh, some people have come back to me sometimes and say, you know what, you were right. You were right. I was wrong. And I was never expecting that. That's how I found out that this works. When they came back to me and said that, I realized that it worked. Because, you know, everybody's not going to get the opportunity to do that. But every now and then one person will. And I remember when I first came back to the Lord and he asked me if I would if I would work for him. And we were talking about teaching and preaching as I'm doing now. And because I had never had anybody to love me, I wanted people to love me. I really wanted people to love me. I wanted to know what it was like. And so God says, well, will you do this for me? And I said, yes. Well, he said, well, you know you're not going to have all of those people to love you. Uh, he said, they're just not going to do it. You're not going to be the social butterfly that you think you are if you're going to work for me. And he said, but I will always provide someone to love you. I cried like a baby. I told him, yes, I just wanted somebody to love me. I wanted lots of people to love me. I didn't want just one or two. I wanted a lot, a lot, lots, and lots, and lots of people to love me because nobody ever had that I could understand that it was love. Uh, but he, but that's the next thing. Everybody is not going to love everybody because everybody does not is not safe and have not come to the place where they understand they have to bear all things. So some people just won't do it. Everybody didn't love Jesus, but he loved everybody. I remember um, I listened to one of the preachers. I think it might have been Jesse Duplantis. I'm not sure who it was. Uh, but he was telling the Lord about a lady that was really, he said, man, she's strange and she's weird. Isn't she God? And God said, yes, yeah, she's strange and weird, but I love her. And Jesse said, uh, you love a strange and weird person like that? And God said, I love you. Hey. <laughs> All right, see, that's what we have to be. That's what we have to be. We have to understand that. Okay, and so what's the final question here, Shantise? I think Miss Cynthia has her hand up. Okay, go ahead, Cynthia. Okay, okay. I, I try to keep this brief, so hopefully it's clear. But I'm trying to think of something 
um, that I think might be helpful because you said we want to be practical in all of this. And when you said, Cynthia, that we have to understand that if we are the firstborn or if someone is the firstborn in their family, they may be uh, given the responsibility of really reaching out to family members and helping them. And, and, it, and it's an honor that they're able to do that and God will help them to do it. Well, when you were saying that, um, I thought of the fact that it is very important that we know ourselves so that us, the opinion, we can stop and, and grow from that because we can listen and, and try to determine if it's accurate or not, or if it is accurate, why? And the reason I'm saying that is because today my husband and I, we were talking and I told him, I don't like people to force me to do things. If I tell you, I don't want to do it. You know, I want to know what part of no, you don't understand. And so I thought about it and I said to him, you know, when I was in school, when I was in elementary school, I was really smart. I didn't think I was smart. I just liked this. I liked school and I liked to study. And so I remember once I had a teacher and the teacher didn't curb the grades, you know, because I had gotten a hundred. So he couldn't curb it. And everyone was wondering, you know, um, you know, why the teacher didn't curb it. And he explained it. And so I said to Wally, I said, you know, now I, I realize, you know, that people were upset with me. You know, I, ha I have people sometimes wondering about me and trying to figure me out. And I just figured they, sh they shouldn't do that because they're not going to be able to do it. And because I'm going to make sure they don't figure me out, you know, because I'm just, you know, I mean, everybody's complex, you know, it's not all that simple. And, you know, and when I talked to my husband today and I remembered how others felt, I didn't know that that was hurting them. You know, I had studied and, you know, I got a good grade. I wasn't trying to create a problem for people, but I'm sure some people probably were upset with me. I didn't know if they were or not, you know, and so sometimes we, we do things like, for instance, as I said, I don't want people putting me in a corner, wanting me to do something. If I say, no, I don't want to do it. And I think it really comes from having experiences such as I explained to you. And I don't want people to have expectations. I don't want to try to have to meet people's expectations. If I feel like I want to do it, I'll do it. If I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. And some people might think that's strange or it's, you know, um, being uncooperative or whatever, but that's their opinion. And I have to, you know, you know, I, I do stop though and try to figure out why I'm like that. And so the day the answer came. So when we are given an opinion of, of ourselves from someone else, it's beneficial to at least listen to it and, and, you know, talk to the Lord about it, pray about it, think about it, think about experiences that we've had that we never even thought about. Cause I didn't even think about that until today, but it was an eye opener for me. And I said, Oh, now I know why I'm like that. I knew I was like that, but I didn't know why. So now I can work on it. Amen. Well, I have been through many, many years of going through this and, um, I didn't have anybody to help me. And so that is why I am doing this video club because God told me to start it. But I teach people how to practically do the word of God. They can choose to do it or not do it. But the practical part, you know, when I came back to the Lord and I knew that I was supposed to love people, the first thing I said, well, how do you do that? How can you love people the way they treat you? Is that possible? And Jesus said, do it. But I didn't know how to do it. And so that's what we're doing now since we're learning how to uh, interact with each other so that we can have the fellowship that we're supposed to have as Christians and get information from each other so that we can do what it is that God has called us to do. And, you know, this, this particular process that I'm going through with you guys, I've been going through this for years. And I remember when I first started, the people just just laughed at me at church. They they just laughed. Oh, that's that's LC. She loves everybody, you know. And and when they see somebody behaving badly, send them to LC, you know, because nobody else is gonna put up with them. It's the truth. I mean, you know. <laughs> so, 
so I didn't have anybody to talk to. I didn't have anybody to help me balance that. And so Cynthia, what you're doing is balancing it because you doing your best, you taking care of your need, you taking care of yourself is paramount. How can you help anybody else if you don't know you? How can you help anybody else if you can't get yourself into the proper boundaries so that you can protect your heart from stuff? Because you have to protect your heart so that the right things come out of your mouth because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that's, and that's when we get in trouble, when we say things we have no business saying that we regret later, you know? And that's one of the reasons I'm starting with number 12, daring all things. We'll go over number 12 again when we get through the list. But this, I'm starting with this one because of the season we're in. People expect everything from people that will give and help, and they won't help anybody. People who are used to giving, people who are used to loving people and helping them out, they're not used to receiving it. But we have to receive love. But how can we receive it? If we don't know how to give it, if we know how to give it, receiving comes automatically. And that's our blessing. It comes from God. He will comfort us. He will send people to do things. You know, he said, uh, I, I, was, I was going over whether I should start this, this club or not. And I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe I'll wait until later. And my cousin Inez sent me a card from California telling me what God was already ministering to me. She sent me a card out of the blue, didn't call or nothing. She sent me the card. I said, okay, God, I got this. I, I understand that she, you used her to help me understand I need to do this. And so what we're doing now is helping each other understand, helping each other get to the place where we can bear all things. No, you're not going to do it in a moment. No, you're not going to do it in a week. No, you're not going to do it in a month or two. It's a process that you go through with Holy Spirit. You just have to begin. And he will walk you through the process and you'll have instances and in, in situations and circumstances where you will grow and you will grow as according to the scriptures that we said, uh, you will grow and everything will work out well. Okay, so what's the next question, Shantis? Uh, the last question here is, are you working for love or is it working for you? Okay, now this is some things that we have to really, really focus on because one of the things that I find that all believers need to do is get delivered from people. We need to get delivered from people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I spend a lot of time ministering to people who are not delivered from people because they keep getting hurt by people. They keep letting people abuse and misuse them. They, they, they keep stepping into areas where they have no control over their emotions and psychologically, they just go off the page because they need somebody to love them the way they want to be loved. So, they get busy and do things. And Cynthia, you, you did that. You, you said that so correct. No is no. <clears throat> Let me tell you, yes can never be yes until no becomes no. Let me say that again. Yes can never be yes until you learn to say no. Because you'll say yes to a lot of stuff you really hate. You don't want to do it. You know you don't want to do it, but you don't want to hurt the person's feelings. You don't want to tell them how you really feel. You don't want to take the blunt of how they're going to act if you tell them the truth. Your yes can never be yes until you learn to say no and mean it and not let that no hurt you. Did everybody hear that? Let me say that one more time. Your yes can never be yes until you learn to say no without being hurt, without trying to please people, without trying to avoid any negative consequences, without trying to get somebody to do something they don't want to do and you need done. Yes 
can never be yes until you learn to say no. And mean it. Now you still have to love the person. And let me give you a practical example of that. Remember what Jesus said, Jesus said uh, in, in uh, a man that doesn't work should not eat. Anybody ever heard that passage? Okay, well, he said should not. He said, he didn't say would not. He's gonna feed them, but guess what? <clears throat> if they don't work, there are negative consequences for not working. You know, there are negative consequences if you don't do it, but you still are going to get to eat. So just saying no to a person doesn't mean that you cannot help them if you see a problem. If you see they need to go to the hospital and you have told them, no, you're not gonna take, I'm not taking you anywhere in my car. I'm just not, you know, you, 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 you need to learn a lesson about that. So I'm just not taking you. But if you see they get sick and need to go to the hospital and you can't get help, put them in your car and take them to the hospital. Yeah, it's what comes out of your heart. It's your attitude and behavior that we're talking about here, you know? And, and, and as we finish this question, I just want to tell you that love has an aftertaste. Anybody know what an aftertaste is like? Sometimes, you know, if you've got artificial sweetener and, you, and it, it, it just has a terrible aftertaste or if you, you eat something bitter or something sour, and, but then you might eat something that's really scrumptious and you say, hmm, that was good. That really tastes good. Love has an aftertaste. So what does your love taste like after you apply it in someone's life? What does it taste like? Is it good? Do they know that they've been loved? Does it feel genuine? Love only sees the good. It deals with issues now. I'm not saying that you should just sit back and let people run over you. You know, if you got somebody that's trying to not or cheat you and, and you, you shouldn't stand there and pay too much for something because they don't want to go back and check the price tag. But you still love them. You don't get mean and nasty and say, you know what? I'm never coming to this store again. Well, they don't own the store. You can't hold the store hostage because of a nasty employee. If you bear all things, you can't do that. That's not the owner. The owner told them to be good to the customer. But since they didn't, you know, if they're trying to sell you something you don't want, you just leave. But you don't leave a restaurant the same way. You know, this is amazing to me. <clears throat> and I'm talking here because this is, this is really a problem. And the body of Christ, we need to be delivered from this. It's a shame that people who work in restaurants have part of their salary as a tip. Well, let me tell you something. How about when you went to work and was nasty because you had a toothache? Did you still get paid or did you get your tip held back? How about when you went to work and you just had death in your family and you could not complete something that you were supposed to complete? Did you still get paid? Yes. Yes. Those people, that's their money. They have attached that to their life. If they don't get enough money, they can't pay their bills. Why don't you give them a big tip and say, I like your smile today. You did a really great job. That will shock them for sure because that bears all things. That's love. That's love. So we, we think about these little things the devil do. We can't, we can't require of people what we won't do ourselves. If we want to be paid on our job when we mess up, and we don't want to pay a waiter or waitress when they mess up. We are a hypocrite and we're not bearing all things. That's the way that works. Bearing all things. And let me tell you something. You get such peace when you learn this one. You know, you know how sometimes people do stuff and your heart just start beating? because you just want to grab them and choke them. Anybody ever said that? 
you just want to grab them and suck them or something. You don't get that. It doesn't come. It doesn't run up your blood pressure. It doesn't cause you to want to change person. It doesn't cause you to feel rejected. It doesn't cause you to feel abandoned. It doesn't cause you to feel anything but perfect peace. There's all things. Number 12, that is a habit that we need to start implementing in our life. And we need to love people this way, regardless of what they do, because it's your choice to love, not theirs. You're the one that's going to be before God about what you did in your body, not what they did. So therefore, we have to love people because love bears all things. This brings me to an end of this. I'm going to see if there's any more comments or any questions. But love is connected to everything that we do. And so <clears throat> that's why lace is, is that's why I'm doing that. You don't know how many people you may bring to Christ just because you love them, just because you love them. We're gonna finish this series of these 14. Next week, we're gonna go with number one, which is patience. Uh, but I have a lot of different series of things that I will be presenting on these programs. And they're all connected with love because you cannot live without love. That's why, that's why uh, um, we have to understand this. There's one thing that God is in everything and that's love. He does nothing without love. Therefore, we should do nothing without love. His love is connected to everything that he does. He's a good father, so he will not enable us when we won't do right. We won't give our tithe, he'll give us some warning. He'll let us have some grace, but eventually we have to deal with it. There's one thing that God will do for every believer, I believe, because I have not talked to, now my, 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 my statistical sample is small, because you know how many people I know. I don't know that many, but the ones that I have talked to always tell me when they're talking to God, he doesn't complain to them about other people. He talked to them about themselves. And I know that's how he does me. So whenever we are confronted with anything that might cause us a problem, let us do this. Let us ask ourselves, in my lifetime, have I ever done anything similar to this? And you know what you're going to find out? The answer is yes. And so therefore I can forgive them and I can bear this and I can love them. Uh, so next week at 7.30, we're going to talk about habit number one, which is patience. That's a big one, patience. Patience. <clears throat> I remember a song years ago that said, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Okay, well, what we're going to learn uh, 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 next week is that you have to work on your own patience. <laughs> God's not going to do it for you. He'll help you, but you have to work on it yourself. He will help. He will help. The only way we can do any of these is help. So does anyone have any comments? Can you tell me anything about it? Has this been helpful? Um, you have any comments, anything to add, any experience? Any questions? Does anyone? No one? It's been helpful. It's, awesome. it's always good to talk about what God expects. It's always good to um, share our experiences. Uh, you shared how God um, taught you because you wanted love. He's taught you how to love and 
that this um, teaching is the result of what you've learned and you want to share. So I thank you for that. All right, thank you. All right, so here we go. This is the initial start of this lace club. So we're going to be doing this. This is lace. So if you know somebody that can benefit from this, please share with them. Please share the link with them. We're going to be using this same link. We didn't get cut off. So thank you, Jesus, for somebody that didn't know what they were doing. Uh, Shanti told me I wouldn't get cut off, but you know, I said, if I get cut off, I'll just have to send everybody a new link because I've never done this before. They cut off, they cut off something I was doing yesterday. And so I wasn't sure, but um, I just trusted her because she knew a little bit about it and just kept going. <clears throat> um, so if no one has any more questions, and if no one has um, any more comments, uh, I'm going to let Shanti, uh, Shanti talk about this for a minute, and then we're going to pray. Shanti? Wow. Yes, this was so awesome. Thank you, Dr. White. This was so awesome. I mean, I have had my experiences even in my walk with God um, and, and with um, some awesome examples from Dr. White in my journey with the Lord and learning how to love people and being able to see it demonstrated in her life, even before we got here at this grand moment with the video club has been um, a lifesaver for me because God does send um, the earthly, earthly reference point, giving us some practical information or giving us information on how to do things practically through people. And um, I truly thank you. I did learn quite a bit tonight um, of things that I already heard, but I caught them tonight on how to love. So I'm excited. I look forward to the next um, uh, life habit. That's gonna be next week, Monday at 7.30. Again, like Dr. White said, please share the link. There's a lot of people that really need to learn about the love of God and follow the example of Christ and loving people. If you have any information you wanna share, comments, as, as we shared with you earlier, just wanna make sure you have the information please uh, connect with Dr. White uh, via, uh, if you want to write, address 150 Post Office Row, Suite 1027 um, at Waldorf, Maryland, 20604, or email, you can email her at drcvwhite at gmail.com. And please, by all means, please visit her website at cvwhite.com, where, as I shared before, she is a renowned writer. She has written over 20 books and all of them, like I said, are powerful. I'm not just saying that. Um, she's loaded with wisdom and, and you do deal with a lot of long suffering in order to, to operate in that kind of wisdom. Um, and one of the books I was sharing earlier is Winning Battles with Love, very powerful book. But these, this, these are the ways to get in contact with her. The website is the way to, to view the other books and purchase them. Um, also Amazon in addition to that. And um, until then, we look forward uh, to seeing you all on next Monday at 730. And I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. White. Okay, so I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for everyone. And, um, and this is what we'll do. We'll pray uh, for the word that we have heard. Um, every week. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I have said everything that you have given me to say, and I thank you for this great body of believers, these people that are belong to you, God, and I thank you for speaking to their hearts and speaking to their hurts and anything that they need, God, I ask you to comfort them and bring them to your expected end in this area of their life. I thank you, God, for decluttering my heart and the heart of the people that are going to be around them I thank you, God, for taking us to a new place uh, in their families, in their businesses, in the church, and wherever they go. And I thank you that the people will see the love of God in them and will see God and not them. We love and appreciate you, Lord. You are our God. You are 
our Lord, you are our King. And we thank you for loving us the way we, you do, because we know that no matter what we do, good, bad, or ugly, no matter where we take you, we know because you loved us first that we can always come back to you. And we do. And so we thank you, God. And we appreciate you, Holy Spirit. And we commit to submit ourselves to you, Holy Spirit, as you teach us. Lead, guide, and direct us every single day of our life. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So that's it for tonight, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, we will see you next Monday night at 730. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, look at that.